So the Christmas play that I wrote for the church that I served last year was an intergenerational play. Of course, you know, everything was online. And I asked the women of the church to send, to, to send me a video of themselves saying, blessed is she. This is me holding a phone, right? Blessed is she. And in, in the story, I talk about the generations upon generations of the faith being passed down. And then you heard all of these voices. And, and one of the blessings of COVID, a daughter of the church who was living in Germany, blessed is she. A daughter of the church who had moved to Chicago, but was able to worship with her family for the first time in years, blessed is she. A new family found the church who moved into town right before the, the lockdown, found us and blessed is she. And I, and their kids were the, were the shepherds in the play. Oh my gosh. I told people do what you can for costumes, little, you know, dish towels on their heads with the dad, <laughs> with the dad's ties around, you know, and the shepherd's hook, you know, or the, you know, the staff were like little wooden spoons. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was just adorable. And so, you know, and blessed is she and blessed is she and blessed is she. And I said, and, you know, and there will be more blessings as we keep telling the story from generation to generation to generation. Uh, one of my favorite, um, uh, so let me say, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Blessed is she. One of my favorite parts is somebody sent me her blooper reel. She couldn't, she's like, I couldn't do it without laughing, Robin. And her daughter, she was doing it with her daughter and she sent me it and, and she said, God, I needed that laugh. Thank you so much. Today we're talking about joy. We're talking about Mary and Elizabeth and Mary's expression of joy, which is the Magnificat. And then I don't know if you've noticed during Advent, been taking, we've been focusing in on uh, characters in the birth narrative. So the first week was, and weaving in the theme of whatever the Advent candle is. So the first week was Mary and hope. Last week was Joseph and peace. Today is Mary and Elizabeth and talking about joy. And this is easy and hard to talk about joy. Easy because it, it joy is connected with community and that's what Mary and Elizabeth offer one another. Hard because we're living in fractured times. And, uh, and our joy, if it is born out in community, which I believe it is, is hard. You know, Advent, is, is a time of longing and a time of waiting. And usually every year, you, you, know, it's, you try to connect people with that, but they're already at the, you know, my family's coming, you know, and we're gonna, you know, and I'm getting to think of each of them as I go to buy them a present. I know the holidays are hard for some folks or Christmas is hard for some folks, but for some it's just, and you're like, wait, no, Advent, longing, you know? And this, this year, how hard is it to connect to longing and waiting? We've been living it for the longest time. Harder to connect with that deep sense of joy. And why? COVID. And I don't know what, you know, we're still, we're not out of the woods. And maybe your family is having to agonize like my family uh, about whether to, whether to gather together or not. Uh, and, I, and I decided to share this as a cautionary tale um, friends of the family had an early Christmas and a, uh, a just daughter-in-law came, had chosen not to get vaccinated and gave COVID to everybody in the family. Her in-laws had to go to the hospital and they are fine. And they, they responded to treatment, but just imagine the holy hell of family dynamics, right? If, if it hadn't gone that way. And so I just throw that out as a cautionary tale um, and just, and uh, yeah, I'm praying for all of us as we make our decisions and, I, and our decisions will, may all be different, but I'm praying for all of us in, in our decision-making. But that's the hard part of talking about joy this year. Uh, but let's distinguish between joy and happiness. Happiness is, it depends on the circumstances, right? It can be fleeting. It's, it's what we're living in the moment. Joy is more of in the e eternal state of grace and gratitude. It's connection with God and, and connection with one another. And so in this Advent season, in faith, let us honor our joy while at the same time saying, yeah, it's another tough one. 
so I just want to say you can be joyful and unhappy at the same time. Let's look at Mary and Elizabeth. Gabriel, uh, Angel Gabriel tells Mary that she's going to be the mother of God. Theotokos, that's a great word for that. Uh, planting a seed, and, and she tells her that Elizabeth, her relative, and by the way, it's a, I, some translations choose cousin, doesn't say that, it's just as relative, so we have to guess, but that her cousin Elizabeth has experienced a miracle, and I think plants a seed for her. To, you might want to go visit Elizabeth, right? And Midrash is what we do when we, we read between the lines and we imagine what the characters and, and what, what's not said. So let's do that a little bit with Mary. So Mary's told that she's pregnant with God's child. And now she's going to see a relative who may understand, who she could tell her story to, and, and she's not going to think that she's crazy. Right? And Mary lived in Nazareth. We believe that Elizabeth was Ein Karim. It would have been a nine-day walk. Nine days. And I imagine that Mary didn't say anything to her closest family. I think she went to Elizabeth. I think Elizabeth was the first one she, that she must have said it to. Because uh, if she told her parents, she wouldn't have been let out of the, let out of the house. Right? right? So it's nine days of thinking and praying, needing to talk to somebody who's not going to think that she's crazy. And then when Elizabeth sees her, what is, what is it comes out of Elizabeth's mouth? Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And can you imagine the joy, the relief, right? And then there's this exclamation. She explains, you know, uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. And that's where we get the magnificat, magnifies. My soul magnifies the Lord. And from that hymn that we just saw, I imagine her singing it. Right, the song of praise and joy, the joy that comes from being seen, from being understood, sharing a life a life changing experience with someone, community, feeling loved, and knowing that we're not alone. Right? Can you think of modern day examples? I just not this rhetorical. Please don't shove them out. <laughs> But just for, in your, for yourself, those times where you felt seen, heard, understood, loved, right? When I was, I was thinking of examples of, of the joy that comes from community, that type of community. I was a pastor for 17 years in Wharton, New Jersey. I felt called out. I felt that I and still believe that it was the faithful thing to do to leave. It was time to pass the baton on to someone else. But it was hard. And I took a break from parish ministry for three years. And at the beginning, I would go worship in a group of strangers on a Sunday morning because I needed to know that I wasn't alone on the journey. I needed to know that there were other crazies in the world who believed in the living God. And even though I had no shared memories with those people, we had a shared experience. And I needed the comfort of that community. Even though I would sit in the back and cry, I needed the reassurance of being in that community. There was joy in that. I have eavesdropped on conversations of Cuban exiles who tell their stories again and again. My, my husband was, was born in Cuba, carried off the island in diapers because of the revolution. But, and I have sat with my in-laws and their friends and didn't realize at the time that they were telling these stories probably for the thousandth time of, of leaving. And, and just imagine, you know, you've got two suitcases and you're leaving everything behind, everything that you've ever known. And to get in, and some got on a plane knowing where they were headed. Some got on a plane, didn't know where they were going, where it was going, but just to get off the island to make their way to a family. And hearing these stories and their community that they experienced, having that shared experience, to be seen, to be understood, to be known, and, and having found each other. Really quite beautiful and extraordinary. There are folks who I, uh, and I have loved ones who have lost children 
I can only imagine what that is like, but for people to be, when they find each other or when they knowingly seek out people who have had that experience, because they know in every fiber of their being what it's like, they don't have to explain, right? The, the, the community that can come out of that is quite extraordinary and beautiful. Community or our joy is connecting with God and connecting with one another. Blessed are we when we find community, when we find, when we experience that connection with God and with one another. But being blessed does not mean it's going to be easy. The blessing that Mary will live out, we know the story. It's not easy. Elizabeth, it's not going to be easy. Love is never easy. Watching those that you love suffer is never easy, even if it's for the good. Years ago, I read the book, The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. I highly recommend it. And he said, we grow the most during suffering. We shouldn't run from it. We should embrace it. And so I read this book before I was married, before I had kids. And I remember, you know, I had prayed for, for my children since they were little. Lord, may they know enough suffering to be good people, but not so much that it breaks them. Right? Uh, when, when we love, we suffer. But what is the alternative? It's the only thing worth living for. I was listening to a podcast recently, Rob Bell, and he was, talk he was talking about calling. And he said, you know, life is hard for everybody. Nobody escapes. He says, might as well. And he goes, even if, you, even if you figure out what your calling is, what you're supposed to do with your life, it's not going to be easy. You're going to get persecuted. It's going to be hard. You're going to suffer. Might as well suffer for something that's going to make a difference. Might as well suffer for something that's going to bless the world. And the joy that we feel knowing that God can use us, right? Do you, I, I know I'm not alone in this. I, I, I'm like, really, Lord, me? I, by the way, I, I, I consider myself the I love Lucy and pastors. You know, it, it, you know it's, it's, I, my mother at one point said, you, should, you need to write down these stories. I'm like, yeah, I haven't. But you know, it's, you know, like, really, Lord, me? You know, I say grace in the sense of humor because, yeah, all of us with our, with, our, with our humanity, with our contradictions, with our good and bad choices, our compromised priorities, and God looks at you and me and says, I'm going to bless you with a call that's going to kick your butt, <laughs> but it's going to be worth it. And we all have calls on our lives. And there's all different calls in uh, in scripture, we're talking about honoring our father and our mother. How are, you know, how are, we, how are we children to, to our parents? How are we siblings? How are we, uh, if you feel called to marriage, how, are, you know, how we do that is, is a sense of, we can, we can do that as a sense of call. How we parent is a sense of call. And God has something to say about how we would do all those things. And all of those relationships are going to kick our butt. Because living out of love. That's what it is, but it's the only way worth living. And it's also what you do with your time and your energy and, our, and your talents, living out of our talents and gifts to bless the world. Whatever you do, and everybody is given lots, you know, more than one gift, more than one talent. So whatever you do, whatever you feel called to, and you can have multiple calls and all that, whatever you do, do it with the frame, with the vision, with the with the with the call that you're going to bless the world through whatever it is that you do. Abraham's call. God says, Abraham, I am going to bless you and I'm going to bless the world through you. To Mary, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless the world through you. To us, I am going to bless you and I'm going to bless the world through you. Your call, my call. We have all been blessed with gifts, but it's not going to be easy. It's never easy. Life is hard. But what makes it easier? Community. 
I want you to think about the people in your life who have been like Elizabeth to you, who see you, who encourage you, who lift, who have lifted you up, who have been proud of your accomplishments and have been there to, to you know, dust you off when you fall down. I want you to name them in your hearts. Lift them up to God with gratitude. And then who are our Marys? Who are the folks that, that you, me, that we are intentionally supporting and understanding and giving encouragement, listening to, taking pride in their, com- uh, in their accomplishments, lifting them up, building them up? Who have been the people that, who are the people that you support? This is also part of our call, and it's also how we know joy. Joy is lived out in community. For many years in ministry, I I used to pray for joy. And and I would say, and I and I hope I I, I, if I'm a good pastor, it is by the grace of God. But I, but I, and I, I'm saying that because I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I, I would say to myself, I'm good at what I do. And I think the church needs people like me who, who are creative and, and have a deep faith and believe that no matter what happens, God is in it and God will see us through. But I wish I knew more joy in what I do. I prayed that for many years. And looking back, I, I think it was because I was lonely. And God has blessed me and I have been intentional about creating relationships where I feel seen and heard and built up and have people that will help me, you know, have perspective and help me dust myself off and and all of that. So this joy, it's a connection with God, but it's also connecting with other people. It's a universal need. What Mary needed, what Elizabeth needed, gifted her. And don't think Elizabeth wasn't happy that Mary stayed there for those three months until the baby was born. Zachariah couldn't talk. (laughs) She had Mary, right? We need connection. We need God and we need each other. How do we help people connect with God and community? And I really think that is the task of churches when we boil it down. How do we help people connect with God in community? And it's, you know, it's not, it's not like it used to be. And I don't know if it was ever like this where you could just open the door and say, y'all come, we're here. But now I think we have to be Mary. And, and it's, it's taking a journey like Mary, pregnant with good news, seeking people with which to share it. Churches also could learn from Elizabeth, supporting, mentoring, encouraging praising the gifts and promise that we see in others, especially people who are afraid, especially people who are afraid of rejection. Mary's fear gave way to joy with Elizabeth's reception. May our instinct be to build up, to encourage, to include, to love, to be a safe place for people so that others may know the joy of living in connection with God and with one another and with God's people. And again, that longing for for connection, it's universal. So we are blessed by the call to offer connection and community and faith. And yet it's gonna kick our butts. (laughs) But it's worth it. What's the alternative? What an incredible call. What a blessing. What joy. In Jesus' name.